barely go with all your teeth. You can't you know? carry food. You can't even go with wisdom. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's insane. What's up, Alan? Hola, mi amigos. Como estas? Alan. <laughs> I was just about to start recording a video uh, regarding the 24 hour sun and stuff. And I saw you guys were live and it was a call in show. So I figured what better way to record a video than live. So there you go. So if you guys don't mind, let me switch scenes here. All right. Hopefully that worked. Cool. Okay. All right. So there's a rift in the community right now about the. 24 hour sun, what does it mean? I haven't claimed a model. You know, some people are demonstrable realists, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's different, very, there's different ways that people have tried to spin this as, that, as if it's not mutually exclusive to a model or, they, or they've taken the stance that because they haven't made any mutual exclusive claims regarding a model or, or what happens in the sky, that, they're, that they would be exempt from this. And that's not the case because if the earth is not curved, right? And it's level, it's a level plane. Well, the certain sky phenomenon that's repeats in the sky cyclically every day has to be explained. And the only way that you would explain that is by pushing everything out from the north, right? So if you've ever said the argument, um, the, the earth is a plane, the elevation angles from Polaris, um, east and west are circles around the center. Well, here's what that would look like in a meaningful way without any model. So there's no graticule attached to this, right? There's no laddies and longies. This is just concentric circles emanating out from a fixed point. For, and this would represent a topographical view of the plane that we live on, similar to an azimuthal equal to distant projection map, right? Just without the uh, locations of the uh, continents, right? Because, you, you know, oh, they're stretched out. People, you know, we don't know, blah, 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 right? But what we do know is that this sun is going to go in a circle in 24 hours, right? It'll be exactly where it started. And we know that in the, uh, in the summer, it's, you know, doing this in the Tropic of Cancer, and then it moves out to the Tropic of Can uh, Capricorn in the, in, in our, in the, no in the Northern winter. And the only way to explain that, um, with concentric circles emanating out from, a from Polaris would be as if the, Focal point of the sun produces a 90 degree zenith every day within these within this region, right? So you're by extension locked into this. You're, you're you're locked into this. This is how you. This is reality for you every time you say, uh, you know, elevation angles from Polaris and concentric or east and west are concentric circles uh, emanating out from that. So this is, this is the representation of reality, regardless of what you call yourself a demonstrable realist, a, that, or that you haven't claimed a model or anything like that. And, cause th and this isn't just directed at any specific content creator that YouTube, there's people within the community that take this position too. So this is just a broad thing for, for everyone who's taken this approach to just kind of take a step back and look at what you're putting forward argumentation wise, because this is why we flipped positions, right? This is why we went from globe to flat earth, because when certain things came to demonstrable realism, they didn't work out for, you know, the globular explanations or things regarding the Copernican principle principle. And, uh, you know, we came to the, to the determination that every, that, you know, these maps, this conception, this graticule that we're given, everything is based off of these elevation angles to Polaris and based off of East and West being concentric circles away from that, right? Just mapped to the sky with, uh, with what is it, right ascension, declination, uh, alt and as, all that stuff is just converting those coordinate systems to, uh, to, to become a sphere, right? To represent the sun as not being part of this system and being out here and shining its light for an observer. Now, this is where we get into the mutually exclusive part of the claims, right? Because if, if the earth is a globe in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the winter here, if an observer in Antarctica sees a sun going around them like this, well, it can't also simultaneously be completing our circuit, right? That it would be geometrically impossible. This isn't an, a situation where you could say, well, we don't know what the thing in the sky is. It doesn't matter. We know where it'll be. We know where the light distribution will be, right? We know that this lad over here is going to see the sun go by it, it can't be doing that for uh, for any amount of time uh, for us on our model because it removes the sun from being part of this physical system and it conforms the the light distribution 
uh, around his fear. You can demonstrate that with a basketball and a flashlight. So, uh, you know, I think it's yeah, a much every, I th- day, right? every day, day after day after day after day. It's not yeah, just I, one it's, time. It's going to be circling that person. Yeah, we should we should be standing on our on our claims this whole time. Like this isn't the time to double down and make this non significant because you're just going to rob yourself of a sweet victory, right? Every time we've looked in we've looked into globular claims. Every time they've brought up something as mutually exclusive to the globe, mutually exclusive to heliocentrism. There is a geocentric equivalent. There's a flat Earth equivalent. There uh, is the, the ground curve. No, it's your eyes. Okay, like it's. There's always an equivalence there, but there's no equivalence here. And this brings me to the uh, to the last or to the second to last topic. And there was recently a demonstration put forward. I didn't grab the link, so I don't have the reference available. But um, the guy did the demonstration where the where he has the the dome and everything. And anyway, the sun's going the wrong direction, so it's close, but no cigar. That's why this is significant and meaningful, and it is mutually exclusive. And if they go down there. Uh, and you know it's cloudy and there's no sun and then like neil degrasse tyson and, and the boys show up and all of a sudden there's a 24-hour sun oh, like, bo- like, like boys boys it's the flattest it's ever been and we all need to or you know obviously we don't, we're not going to just cohesively become the same you know organized mind or whatever but just really reevaluate uh you, you know what you're putting forward versus what globular has put forward when you know when when we're you know debunking their claims and you'll see that if you are arguing that this is possible on a uh, that this is possible on a flat earth that you're you know doing the same thing that the that you know turned you into a flat earther right like that repulsive nature of like why is this argument fallacious but i don't know remember before we understood what logic fallacies were and we we would hear the fallacious argument and we didn't know like what it was called but it just was like uh this is disgusting get it away yeah. right like we're 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 you know we're doing that uh you know now and it's not we don't we don't have to boys it's we've we've never been more solid and sound and then further uh let's see so there was these this headache this, this astronomy thing from eric debay where where he's you know, done a total flip flop now. And you shouldn't just follow people that do total flip flops or tell you things that you want to hear because you'll never see the video where they explain this and then show how this is possible. If you believe that East and West are concentric circles emanating out from, uh, uh, from Polaris. Uh, but you know, so when they, when he got to the reference of the, uh, ladies, I can't remember her name, but the Zetetic woman who said, Oh, yeah, yeah, Lady Blunt. Yeah, shout out to your girl, Lady Blunt. She was like, oh, yeah, we acknowledge 24-hour sun in Antarctica, but we still remain flatter. Nah, dude, you don't have you don't have a position if you acknowledge this and say that this, you know, and say that there's a plane. Today, sadly, sadly, today, a Nick Fouquet word. Which, oh, uh, no, you know, my boy. Yeah, I was watching him, and he, I've loved everything he's ever done, and he said, we don't have a model, <sighs> This, this this experiment is giving us a model, blah blah blah. We don't have a model. And then no. he said there is a 24 hour sun in Antarctica, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know what you're saying? Like, I know many people can't see it, but uh, I've been voicing it for three weeks that I'm trying to tell people that there's just and you can look into it yourself. If you realize that there's a north and a south on a flat map, then there really is no way that you can have something on the outside going around the person in the opposite direction than we say the sun's going. It just doesn't work. Uh, it is mutually exclusive. That's why I think the, the observation is a good one because it is that one thing that I've said for nine years that uh, doesn't occur, that I still stand behind and say it doesn't occur. And what did I get for my saying mm-hmm. that is that by simply just saying, if what if uh, everybody now has gone into this weird mode of it doesn't matter and uh, we know it's flat regardless of anything else. Like, don't say that. To, I mean, we've been trying mm-hmm. to say that we're like scientific, that we it's are like, not pseudoscientific. It's like they, now. Yeah, it's like they became confused globers. Like they, yeah, they left the scared. they left the flat it's Earth something. stance, and yeah. then and I, I don't know, but it's, it's scared me the most that I've started to feel like I wonder now. I question whether a lot of people believed it originally, because I just don't really get how you can now take that different position and make it seem like um, you know. It's almost like they, I, to me, it just seems like some people either became flat earthers because it's a contrarian point of view 
And so now somebody who's very, because I know these guys are confident, right? Toon's confident. Uh, Duffy's confident that there's a 24-hour sun. <laughs> well, you should expect them to be confident. They are right. Globers. So they don't, they don't even have a question because if there's a question, then they wouldn't be so sure about being Globers. So the fact they don't have a question, they think it happens. I'm like, let's go down there. And people are like, but they'll fake it. They'll do this and this, the sun simulator. Like, make them do that. Dude, they'll make put them- the sun on a snowblower, Jaron, and that'll be a wrap for Flat Earth. Like, boys, <laughs> that's, around the horizon. dude, they, we have a multi-zillion dollar corporation making fake space stuff every day that we point out. But if they put the, the sun on a snowblower, dude, it's a wrap for Flat Earth. Like, all right, dude. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's great. So yeah, real quick to, to close on that. Um, let's see. Did I have anything else? Demonstrables, Zetetic. Nope, that was it. That was pretty much it. Oh, so yeah, on, on the character of Jaren, right? Is Jaren a shill? Is behind the curve? Can we trust him? Is he a retard, et cetera, et cetera? Well, you can, you can go and ask Jaren for, for him to CC you in the emails that he had with the directors of that film and how it all went down. I have some screenshots that are uh, you know nice and crisp. crisp quality um that you can disseminate for the boys or whatever but the whole thing was a total hit piece they lied to him they lied to everyone that did it they took the film in a different direction he's never lied about his position or changed anything he said he's (laughs) he's done multiple videos on it where he's brought up the email communications but because he streams in 720p it looks not so great so i don't want to use that as a reference but uh you multiple i mean dude it's just like if there was somebody that was gonna lie about it. if he all of a sudden was like oh yeah you know what i did know her but we had caught like that would be like whoa you what like no there's no inconsistencies um anyway you can uh you can have access to that and use that to defend like what happened with that observation right because we know ref- we know what refraction is now at this point right we know that the observations will fluctuate daily where you know throughout the day uh and we know that um that they, they took more than one observation, one fit the globe, one fit the flat earth, one fit neither. And the, which one did they go with, guys? Well, we have all the documentation and promises and explanations and admissions from them. Imagine having an email from the director that, that says all this, where she's like, oh, yeah, sorry, we cut you, dog. But, uh, you know, catch you on that flip flop. <laughs> what? That's crazy, dude. And further, if Jaron was lying about this and slandering them, he would be he would be liable. Right. They're never going to push back on this. They know what they did. So we should back our people instead of, you know, oh, maybe he's a shill. I don't know. No, stand on. Explain refraction. Explain what happened with this documentary. Have people go reach out to Jaren. Like, hey, can you CC me in those emails? You can have the records available to you, boys. Right. It's all, you, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it's just a shame to see an observation that hasn't even happened yet. It's caused such a such such a ripple in the community where it's this is uh, i thought a lot of this stuff would be you know was that we were all on board with with some of the stuff and i realized that maybe some of us aren't some of you know and there's different levels of understanding et cetera, et cetera. maybe people haven't thought about this one in a long time or whatever um but yeah this is a this is a mutually exclusive observation like i know there's some disagreement about the nomenclature it's an exp- it's not an experiment there's no what's your ivd yeah guys guys it's a mutually exclusive observation so right it is, we know it, it's, it's, it's every single day yeah the sun and, uh, does this every day there's no question about people say we can't look at the lights in the sky and determine what we're on the ground well what you can do is look at the light in the sky and if the light in the sky does the same thing Every single day for everybody's birth since they, since they were born, nobody the son's never done anything different. And from that, you can start to make some determinations. Like if there is somebody standing on the outside of our world that sees the sun going around their head the opposite direction than people do in the north, then that doesn't allow the sun to get to the other side of the world anymore. So it just doesn't work on our map. And it should be something, that's all I was saying. And it should be something everybody should say, which is, oh, if the sun does that, yeah, it 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 falsifies our current understanding of flat earth. I'm not saying you have to say you're not a flat earther. You have to be a glober. You don't have to do any of that. But you should be honest with yourself to say, oh, it completely invalidates our map. And people won't say that. I'm the only one who will say it. Everybody else uh, gets upset and says, "There's, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. This, this. And again, I just want to point this out. Whenever we said before that you can't go off the lights in the sky to prove the ground that you're on, it's because people were saying, oh, the sun's a sphere, the moon's a sphere, and the planets are spheres, therefore we're a sphere. And that's when we said you can't look at things in the sky and determine what you're on because that is true. You cannot. We were never talking about uh, 
the sun going around and then this 24 hour day or, or whatever, we weren't talking about that because that is something it's just like, you know, people always show sunsets and sunrise and they show the star. Like, why don't we just say that when people question the stars going the opposite direction during the debate that Austin had with uh, <laughs> Professor Dave, he should have just said when he said, Hey, right. what about these stars? He should have just said, Oh, we don't look at the, we can't look at the stuff in the sky and determine what we're on. You should, that should be our answer to everything. But you guys are now picking and choosing when you can say that. But then the things that we can answer, you actually answer the things. But you're like, oh, this one we can't answer, so we'll just throw this in there. Oh, you can't determine where you're at because of the sides in the sky. It sounds yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it does. Sound- it, it's my. It's it, it does sound ridiculous, and it and it has that air of uh, that fallaciousness to it that just is repulsive. And uh, like the the reason that I can like you know, and I'm sure Austin feels the same way. Like the reason that we can go and debate people anywhere is because we have the truth on our side. We're not lying. We don't have to come up with some crazy explanation. Like, you know, we don't have to resort to anything fallacious. We could take anything head on and anything we don't know, we can look into and figure it out. Right. But this is one of those things where it's like, if you're not representing this truthfully to what it is, then you're uh, being fallacious. And you know, you're, you're just Calabunga, Calabunga Joe says, if we don't know what the sun is or its composition, then anything it does is irrelevant as to the Earth's shape. It's a non sequitur. And it's just if you just were paying attention, you, you would realize that that's not true, that we, we don't need to know what it's made of. It doesn't matter if it's made of cheese or if it's made of, of little diamonds. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it goes around the Earth in 24 hours and has to bring sun and heat to the, all the continents. So if you know that and you know that it can't be behind somebody in Antarctica while at the same time having to light up Australia, it just doesn't work. Dude, so, yeah, Dude you know, you know what? How about the third lad where the sun's always going to be having a Zenith here? Right? right. So now that we know, now that we've established that it doesn't matter what the sun's made of, there's always going to be a dude in this region that has a sun with a 90 degree Zenny. Okay. Correct. So that's how we know. And that's how I know that there is no 24 hour sun. There's just the evidence is lacking. The cut videos, the sea cables, the slower speeds in the South. Like there's so oh, dude, much. Dude, you guys, just- you guys want to get into some crazy stuff, right? So I, I got a present to present real quick, quick promo. Cause I'm going to dip out of here. Cause I think I pretty much landed the plane on this, but uh, nobody else. In the- oh, okay, cool. So on, on Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a presentation on GPS, but before that, Dr. Bennett's going to be doing his presentation on Monday, for ether, uh, for the alpha plus Hildegard, Hildegard ether model. So definitely check that out. And then on Tuesday, I'll be doing a presentation on relativity and GPS. And one of the, one of the, okay. So you know how they say that we live on this geoid and on the ground when they're, when they're doing geodetic surveying due to the equi- equi- gravitational potential difference, right? They have to tilt their theodolite. They have to deflect the vertical. I'm sorry. They have to uh, deflect their plumb bob. Right. They have to physically deviate it because they're saying that the gravity potential at that location that they're taking the measurement isn't going straight down to the center of the ball. There's some gravitational anomaly and they have to correct for that. What they're really what they're really saying is that uh, motion in the sky isn't uh, happening at the same t- or isn't uh, in alignment with the timing that they have for their coordinate system. So they have to f- correct that with a physical deviation uh, wow. to make. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, they go as far as to say that due to this gravitational potential difference that a physical plumb bob hanging from their theodolite station has to be, you know, is, is being, uh, uh, not, not true to the center of the ball. Okay. So in 1965, they did pound Rebka and pound Snyder. This was experiments using electromagnetic, uh, different ele- electromagnetic frequencies, uh, sending, sending them, uh, vertically up and down 75 and seven or 70 and 75 foot towers in their respective years. But anyway, uh, what they were doing was what they were testing the, gra- the equigravitational potential in accordance with, uh, Einstein's theory of gravitation, meaning that, you know, conv- that if you conserve earth's mass mass into a gravitational field, um, and then you would be able to extrapolate the, uh, the frequency shift in light that it would experience traveling through that gravitational gradient, right? Cause it's essentially creating, it's turning the mass attracting mass into a field, right? Like a, like a, like a, like a gradient uh, of a, of a field essentially. Right. So they're saying that you get closer to the surface, you're going to have more, uh, that field's going to be stronger. You get further away, it's going to be less uh, restrictive, right? So they have their calculations for their predictions of how much the frequency shift should be at 70 and 75 feet. 
they take their measurements, they get a frequency shift that, co that corresponds to that prediction. And they were like, okay, well, here's the thing, boys. We also, uh, the classical prediction, meaning that the speed of light changed in a, in, uh, as if it fell faster at 9.8 meters per second squared to complete the, the trip from top to, top to the bottom uh, faster um, would produce the same frequency shift in the way that they did the the way that they uh, did have their detectors, they can't differentiate between the two and they should really do an, another test with atomic clocks to, so that they could time the, the flight time from the top and the bottom. And that would give definitive evidence if it's a gravitational field or if it's a, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, if the speed of light's changing. Now they never followed up on that. And those gentlemen were given the Nobel prize for giving conclusive laboratory experimental evidence of gravitational redshift corresponding to Einstein's predictions. So what have we learned so far that there's going to be a mandatory frequency shift due to gravitational potential from a signal being sent at altitude down to sea level. Okay. So what that means is uh, for satellites is that there should be latitude dependent corrections based off of where a satellite is when it sends a signal. So for example, if you have a dude at the 50th latitude and the satellite is at his zenny also at the 50, their gravitational potential between him and uh, that satellite is going to be like a straight line to that orbit of, they say it's 22,000 kilometers. So just give just to make the, just make it simple. So the difference between him, the, him and the satellites, 22,000 kilometers. Well, if he sends, if that satellite, because it sends the signals all at the same time, it's just a pulse. So at the same time, it sends a signal to your boy down here at the 45th, right? He's at, because of the geometry of the globe, the equigravitational potential difference, right? It's going to be, it's going to, it's further, it's literally physically further away from that satellite. So there's going to be a different gravity, equigravitational potential for that observer. So there should be a frequency shift for the light based off of that gradient and they don't make any latitude dependent corrections it all just works out but wow. they what they proposed is well we know the earth's an oblate spheroid and the earth's gravitational field is stationary so when the oblate spheroid is rotating through it it's uh it offsets that correction boys let me tell you something if they're saying that a theatolite plug bob has to could be physically uh deviated because of this correction the frequency and shift in light at 75 feet is, this is these are mandatory latitude dependent corrections that should have to be implemented in GPS relative to the satellite's position and they're they're not in GPS. So the only way that this would work it, in my conceptualization in, of it is if the you know, we live on a plane, the satellites are orbiting above us on a plane as well. And there's an equipotential gradient between us and the signals are being sent through that. That's the only way that you could explain the, how it just works without saying that, oh, you know, stationary gravitational field is offset by the oblateness. What? There's no oblateness if there's no offset, my, or if there's no need to make a correction, my dude. Cause they, so why doesn't it offset the, uh, the reciprocal zinni lads when they're on the ground measuring? No, you can't have it both ways, dog. So this, is, uh, this destroys reciprocal zinnies and... Uh, equipotential like it gives a mutual exclusive to us because the it would be two planar two planar uh distances to create that equipotential signal so that's coming tomorrow excellent looking forward to that and Thank what are you. you doing right now you're doing something live oh that you're doing live video about this no nope. yeah i was just recording this for oh. for you yeah for the uh for the 24-hour sun thing because it's i think it is really important in you know, it sucks that you're kind of bearing the, the brunt of it on the on the forefront on that. But much appreciated to you, man. And shout out to you for always being a stand up guy. And, you know, I've seen you do correction videos, admit when you're wrong, apologize to people. And when I uh, when I'm interacting with with people and stuff like I do, I model my behavior. I'm like, dude, like would Jaren do something like that? It's like, you know, just because I, I view your character in, in high regard because of the way you conduct yourself, man. Like uh, I respect you. Um, you, you've taught, you've taught me a lot in terms of how to be, that it's more important to be truthful to yourself than it is to capitulate to, oh, this looks bad for the movement or this looks bad for X, Y, Z. Like, no, you can't lie to yourself, dude. <laughs> and I, and I don't well, see you, you ever doing that. And that's what I truly appreciate about, about you. And that's why I still watch your content, bro. You're one well, of the thanks. only that. few I people. I appreciate you, uh, doing the comments that you did in Leo stuff. Cause there's nobody else doing that. And you 
had no problem, you know, calling to task and just saying what's wrong with calling yourself a demonstrable realist who then is saying, oh, if you go demonstrate this reality thing, it doesn't matter to me. It's, yeah. well, then you're not a demonstrable realist. So, you know, make up your that, mind. That part-time realist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pick and choose realist. Yeah, dude. Uh, we did have Kyle Bunga Joe. See, I still, the, the, what baffles me is no matter how many times we show this or talk about it, then there's still somebody in the chat saying right now, uh, Kyle Bunga Joe says, a light in the sky bears no relevance to the earth. Sorry. Yeah, just, dude. Th see, like, dude, it's it, it's the internet, bro. That guy might not even be a real person. Hey, Cowabunga Joe, you might be right, brother. It's possible. It's possible. I like I like that. Yeah, I, like that I like that approach, yeah. dude. Cowabunga Joe, and I hadn't considered what you uh, your position, and now that you've said it, I'm giving it some more thought, and I'm gonna have to think more on that, man. Thank you, much appreciated, brother. Yeah, I'll think about that yeah. one too. Isn't it funny though? It's like the same camp that like their go-to argument is typically like a light in the sky measuring to a light in the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Nicely said. So yeah, some people are very happy that you said that. That's good. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else here at the bottom. Oops. Uh, took a screenshot. Somebody's betting five hundred bucks or five thousand dollars. Know what's going on there? Uh, you are presupposing to know what the map even is. You have no idea. Neither do I. I will find it interesting, but it proves nothing either way. Calbon and Gajo, do you know that <laughs> the sun goes around the earth in 24 hours? And your answer would be yes. And if it's no, then I don't even know what you're doing. So let's say yes, we know it goes around 24 hours. Okay. Do you know that there's people who live in Africa and people who live in South America and people who live in Australia and people who live in India and people, right? We know that that's the case. Okay. Just like... Uh, just like Alan just showed you, each one of those people will have the sun at a zenith point, meaning straight above their head at some point during the day, the 24 hours. And maybe not exactly above their head as it could be a little bit right or left, but you get my point. So then if it does that, then you can you can make assumptions about things that can or can't happen in that world. And one of those things is somebody in Antarctica can't have a sun going around them doing 360 above their head just round and round and round every day because how did the people in the other areas of the world get the sun? So I don't get where it's just, it seems like such a cop out and it doesn't seem like that's the flat earthers that I got involved with at the beginning. There was no case of flat earthers just dismissing an observation like that. Just we, what we did is when somebody brought something up and said, Hey, how does this work? Well, we took it and we studied it and we researched it and we came up with the answer. That's how everything worked. That's why we're still flat earthers. So we at no point just said, ah, it doesn't make a difference. You know, well, what about the stars going the opposite way in the South? No, it doesn't, it doesn't, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter. You can't look at the stars in the sky and say that it matters about the Earth's shape. We didn't say that. We actually went out and showed people how the star rotation works uh, north and south and how it's just a perspective view, whereas on the globe, you're actually going upside down, where on the flat Earth, you're just turning around, looking either south or looking north. So I'm just saying that it seems like it's a different group now. Now the group is not, uh, they are basically uh, saying that they don't care about observations anymore. They don't care about anything. Uh, it doesn't matter to them anymore. And that's peculiar to me um, because it's okay to say, oh, if we saw this, then just like if we said, what, what would happen if there was curvature measured? You should say, oh, if there was curvature measured, then I would say that we're on a globe. That's okay to say. It's not like you should be attacked for that. That's okay to say. Yet people now would never say that. They would just say, well, even if there's curvature measured, it doesn't make a difference. It's, uh, it's always going to be flat. So doesn't that sound ridiculous if I said that? If I said, oh, it doesn't matter if you go measure curvature, it's still flat. Well, no, that wouldn't make any sense, right? So it's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's just a matter of, again, uh, it, it, the thing is, it's up to each individual person. That it's not. I'm not the arbiter of truth. It wouldn't even matter if I went down there and came back and said, hey, uh, we did see the sun go behind our, our head. Here's the thing that's great about it is that you should want data and you should want data from something that we haven't been able to get data for. So if somebody's going to go down there and film, and then you should request and highly demand uh, large amounts of data. Now, uh, I did talk to, I guess his name is Where's Wally. He messaged me yesterday on uh, Telegram and just said, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to make a request to Will that everybody shares everybody's footage. Meaning, if you go down there and you take any footage, <clears throat> we'll have a channel on YouTube where everything will be uploaded to, like uh, everything from Dave McKeegan, everything from everybody who's down there. And I agreed. I said, that's it. That sounds great. That's a great because idea. imagine all that. Yeah, imagine all that material for you guys to sift through. So if there is anything faked, if they do fake the sun or they fake clouds, you'll be able to look at it and you can determine for yourself whether you accept it as uh, evidence or not. And that's what it, what it should be simply put as. Why is everybody so afraid 
it, I mean, really, I've never heard people sound so fearful of everything. Like, oh, don't you know the military has been hiding the flat earth for all these? They're not going to let you go down there and film it. I get all that. But what you're saying is that they have to fake it. That's what you're saying. So why wouldn't you want people down there with one good job? The one job is to watch the fucking sun. And if you stared at the sun for three days straight and watch what it's doing, you're going to know if they replace it with a fake sun, if it's just a mirrored image of the real sun. All those things would be determined. Yet people want to stop it from happening because they're like, well, Will Duffy has got a weird smile. Okay, well, he's got a weird smile. Uh, I still want the data. So if it's even not me who goes down there, I'm going to be happy with whoever goes and just ask them, hey, get as much footage as you can so we can come back. So you can come back and we can review it. And then you make up your own mind. But uh, to just demonize the whole thing is some joke when it's actually not a bad observation. When you look at both things, we've always said there's a difference between flat earth and globe earth. But a lot of them, like uh, Alan said at the beginning, there's an explanation for both sides that really either one could be true. And so you, if you're on a fence, it really it shouldn't weigh you one way or the other because both of them have an explanation. You know, why can't we see too far? Well, because of refraction. Okay, that's their excuse. And then we say you see too far because it's flat. Really, that either one, you kind of, okay, whatever. But with this one, there is no explanation for a flat earth. So that's why it is kind of uh, an important thing. Yo, Jaron, have you considered this possibility, my dude, though? I'm ready. It's on screen now. Okay. What is that? It's a snowblower with a fake sun. If they drive it around the horizon, no, Austin and I would never be able to figure that out. We would definitely that fall would, for that. That would, that wouldn't get you guys? No. And, and the, hmm. neither would the helicopter carrying it around. So. Oh. I, and I don't even think people realize how big something would have to be to do that. <laughs> like, it still has to maintain its same exact uh, half a degree uh, uh, size, you know, relative, what is it called? Uh, I was going to say relative a size. Angu angular size. Angular size. Right. So it's still got to maintain that. So it's you got to have a pretty big item. And I don't know if you can really carry that up in a helicopter and uh, fool us. But again, if they're going to do something like that, wouldn't you want people down there to... And I think that'd be extremely dangerous for them to even try to fake because what if they get it wrong? What if something goes wrong? They've just exposed their whole hand. It would be easier to cloud up the sky, cancel the trip. And so that's what I expect to happen. And if they do that now, think of how great of, an, of a celebration that would be or how great of a win that would be for Flat Earth. But now since everybody's shit on it so bad, you've kind of ruined that chance. Like it's... Dude, yeah. Now, like, <laughs> like, oh, they canceled it because they were, you know, well, yeah, but we could have gotten around this. And then when they cancel it, it'd been a win. Yeah, don't deny but, yourself that sweet victory. I'm I'm waiting for it. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna take it. I'm gonna take it. I don't have any money to put into the the betting website, but if I did, I would bet on that. <laughs> that was that's a cool that's a cool concept. Yeah, it's a cool site. I used to help them. Uh, has, has anyone hit you up on that yet or no? I don't. Yeah, I mean, there's two people who bet. It's a it. real bet uh, bet uh, site now. Yeah, this one here on Bet Moose. I'll bring it. Oh, you can't see the screen. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I put up a bet here. Oops, you can't see that either. Are you um, doing side bets too? Like if they cancel it, X, Y, Z, or? No, I mean, somebody did mention like, what if there's a non-consensus, which I can't really picture, but let's say that there is. Let's say, you know, let's pre pretend Austin and I go down there and we're like, it's a sunset. And they're like, no, it didn't. It went around your head. <laughs> Dude, no, no. <laughs> <don't really> have... <laughs> Austin, really Austin says that it it's uh, that it went around his head and McKeegan says that it sets. Now we're at a real... <laughs> Now we're at a real problem, dude. They just switch teams. <laughs> yeah. Austin becomes oh, a super okay. glober, and we have Keegan uh, on the forefront of the debates for flat Earth. What is your What is your opinion <laughs> of what uh, happened? Oh, by the way, just real quick, uh, this is the site here. So it's Bet Moose. You go there, you'll see that there's a will flat Earth receive a 24 hour sun. Okay. And you can send Bitcoin to either one of these, and then get and, paid and off. just for for me because I, I know what is all about, but uh, I don't have the insights. But someone of our site is going to. Or, or just the Glovers? Yeah, it's supposed to be somebody from our side. They just don't, they haven't fully decided who yet. Okay. So hopefully soon, but uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say something else I forgot. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to ask you, what is your opinion of Eric Dubé? I guess that I don't have a problem. Well, I do have a problem with obviously the flip-flop, but uh, the weird thing to me was him saying that if the sun does set, that's not evidence against the globe or it's not a false falsification of the globe. How would he say that? Yeah, so to try and get people to try and get us to repeat it, and then once we repeat it, there'll be like general confusion, and nobody will have a coherent position. Okay, might be. So that makes sense. So, so yeah, like coming into like to try and get new people to come into it, they're gonna see 
like you know the like the results in in social media and stuff will be presented as like uh you know we don't know what we're talking about or we actually agree and we're like we're retarded you know so i don't know man it, it's crazy i never really when when you told that story about how he you know called everyone a shill and then accused you of that money thing and like never reached out and stuff was like like the the red flag was like oh okay this dude's like just you know so like i've never yeah, really like, so like, left a comment saying come talk to me let's let's have a conversation and just got to no so. when you when you see that behavior and you're just like that's just not right like you just wouldn't do that if it was if it was a genuine person like i don't i don't know if i ever if somebody ever or if i ever found out something about you if i would ask you first you know and then right and then everything off of that interaction I would base on, you know, you, like, I just can't imagine doing it that way and then just ha having it up this whole time. It's crazy. Um, and then acting like you're like a reputable person. So like, I don't personally, uh, like, yeah, it baff baffled me. I can't imagine anybody saying like, okay, I'm going to flip flop my position. And while I'm doing so, I'll go ahead and call somebody else a shill for staying with their position. <laughs> like what? Yeah, you dude, it's, not, it's a market. It's like some marketing scheme craziness, dude. <laughs> like, the old flip flop yeah, diversion, perfect. you know, look over here trick. Uh, it was like, I'm, I'm the real oh, sun master. I, I'm flip flopping. While the guy that's been telling you the same like, thing uh, is, uh, is the, Kamala is the trickster. Thing. What's that? Lady Blunt. Oh yeah. Lady. Saying Kamala Harris was never in charge of the border now. What's that? What do you mean? They went around calling Kamala Harris. The borders are like, Joe Biden put her in charge of the border so, when they took office, right? I didn't so, know that, but maybe. Oh, I, and they oh. called her the border czar on all the stations, all the, you know, CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox. And now they're all backtracking saying, well, we never called her the border czar. Those were the right-wing Republican extremists that were calling her the border czar. Wait, I'm, I did I'm, not know that. I'm, I'm confused. They put her in charge of human trafficking and, and then they did what? <laughs> Yeah, she did a great job. Nice, hell yeah, dude! Shout out to you! Shout out to your girl. She was like, "We got to get these trafficking numbers up." Children, gather round. Auntie Kamala's She's here. <laughs> you remember when she met with the kids from about space, and there was totally uh, a dude. Moment. Those kids later went on to grow up to be astronauts. So <laughs> she had she had a really profound Brand impact on them, and NASA is gonna bring her back as like a mascot. So that's really cool. And it came out that all those children were paid actors. Oh no, they're paying yeah, they the were, kids. They're fake they're kids. kids. Dang. Yeah. Fake children now. We've Start got uh, somebody from what, what what does it say? What a world says, how do we call in? It's on the screen. You go to, oh, I hope it's on the screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's bottom know. left. Uh, Tinyworld.com slash globe bus. Uh, when we let you go, we have crazy Doug up next. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off, man. Thanks for the thanks for the airtime. Appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this out and put it up. But uh, shout out to you guys for holding it down, man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Check out Space Audits. Obviously, does great work there, and the Ether Boys and Ether Cosmology and Flatter Fridays. Uh, check it all out. Thanks, guys. All right, Peace. let's go with Peace. Crazy Doug.